This is the Volk Miner D1 Mini. It is an at-home Dogecoin miner utilizing the script algorithm. It's small, it's powerful, and even better, it's profitable. So today I'm gonna to take you through a review on this little at-home Dogecoin miner. We'll go through the setup, the installation, and of course, the profitability, so you can figure out if it's something you might be interested in. Let's get into it. All right, so here we have it. The Volk Miner D1 Mini. 2.2 gigahash at 500 watts. Now, the first thing I notice about this little unit, it is quite substantial. There's a fair bit of weight to this thing. A really solid little unit. So if we have a look at the front here, this will be our exhaust. You can see our hash boards in there. It's obviously got this little red sticker. Where are we? Right there. This is the do not remove screw. This will void your warranty if you remove this. So don't remove that. Pretty straightforward. Let's flip it around and have a look at what we've got to work with. So fairly straightforward setup. You can see we've got our power supply cable in here. That's just your standard PSU power supply on and off button. We've got our ethernet cable down here. This is an SD or a micro disk drive, I would imagine. And then of course we've got our reset and our LED buttons down here. So not too much to it. We are gonna get this thing plugged in and take you through the whole install process. First up, let's have a look at some of the specs on this miner itself. So over here on CryptoMinerBros.com, we can see there are a couple of options which will affect the price. The in-stock price, $1,979, and the April batch, you can save yourself a little bit of money, a couple hundred bucks, just by waiting a month or so. So a pretty good option if you are looking at grabbing one of these. The expected hash rate and power consumption, we can see here 2.2 giga hash per second at 500 watts. So super, super low and nice and efficient, which is really, really good. You really need efficient hardware in this market if you want to stay online for as long as possible. Plenty of weight in this thing, you know, four and a half kilos, six kilos, pretty heavy. I would say probably closer to the six kilo range based on what I felt when I picked this thing up, but that's neither here nor there. It's going to be sitting down the whole time. The noise level, 75 decibels. They say it's not quite 75 decibels, probably around the 55 mark. It does make a little bit of noise. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's completely silent because it's not. Um, if you've got other ASICs, it's probably more on par with your sort of AL2 lights or generally your Ice River at home uh, ASICs, uh, your mini miners, things like that. The voltage 200 to 300 volts. So I'm at 240 volts, which is perfect. I think you can run this on 120 volts. I'd be surprised if you couldn't, but make sure you do your research on that. Figure out if you can before you go plugging this thing into anything. You don't want to risk any damaging anything there. The warranty at Miner Bros, 365 days. It's got an Ethernet cable, um, your standard sort of storage temps and operating temperatures. Now, if you are looking at grabbing yourself one of these, there will be a referral link in the description there. You can use my code there. You will save a little bit of money. But make sure you do your research first. Don't just buy one of these because, you know, they're exciting. I've done that in the past and I've been burned. So make sure you do your research or just watch this video, I guess, and uh, figure out if it's something you're into. So to begin with the physical installation, not a lot to this whatsoever. It requires an Ethernet cable and a PSU power cable. All you've got to do is plug those two in and fire it up. Okay, so let's talk about how you actually set this thing up inside the box. When you get your Volkbinder D1, it will come with this little card. Let's put that on screen there, which has a, uh, a QR code you can scan and it will take you to this PDF here. And it's just going to go through all the information. So we'll follow some of it and uh, and I'll take you through the whole process. So the first thing you're going to need to do, obviously, is you're going to need to find it on your network. So you're going to need to find the IP. Now, it recommends downloading IP Reporter. 
I wouldn't recommend that personally. That's just for me. I don't really like downloading things that scan my IP network, call me paranoid, but how I like to do it is to go into my router. Now, for example, I have a TP-Link router. Now, when you set up your router, you would have set up a login and all that sort of information. If you didn't, it will have default passwords to log in, but you can Google search all of this. It's very, very simple. The way I like to find my IP for new miners go into my router, go into my clients list, and you'll see the miner that has the lowest uptime, right? So if we look at some of these, they have 21 hours and 49 minutes. When I first plug this Volt miner in, it had one minute. So that's your go-to. You're gonna take this IP address that you can't see is blurred out. You're gonna copy that and you're gonna put it into your browser. Once you've entered that into your browser, it'll take you to a sign in page and it's gonna ask for a username and password. Now this is where we will refer back to this PDF again. We can see right here, the default username and password is root for the username and LTC at dog, which is an interesting one for the, uh, for the password. So you're gonna click enter on that, click sign in and it will take you into the dashboard, which we're looking at right here. So let's go over a few things that we can see on here. So obviously you've got your elapsed time, your uptime, you've got your mega hash per second. This is real time and your mega hash per second, your average. So your average mega hash per second is what you're going to look at. And at just over 2.2 giga hash or 2,214 mega hash, it's right on there. So, so far, so good. We can see below, it's got a list of our pools, our accepted and rejected shares, our nonce number, all that sort of basic information. But firstly, you're gonna to need to enter in your details, wallet, username, and all of that sort of stuff. So that will be down here in this pool slash minor section. So you can see here, I've got my URL entered in, my worker name and my password. This is the same for any miner that you're gonna set up. It's gonna need your stratum plus TCP your wallet dot, your worker name, you can enter in whatever you like here and your password. Now I'm using a program called Mining Dutch and they spit out a specific password. So that is what we're using. We go down to the next tab, the network tab, it's telling us our IP address, our net mask, all the sort of stuff that I wouldn't go touching at all. The next tab is the important one, your password. So when you first log in, you're gonna enter in that current password, which was, I think it was LTC at dog. Um, enter that in and set your own password for your own security. This should be your first step. It'll log you out, log you back in, and, uh, and then you can keep fiddling around. The next tab is the upgrade. I presume this will be for you know new firmwares when, if they come out. So no need to do anything there for now. Moving down, you've got your monitor. This is gonna tell you just a bit more information as far as what's going on with inside the miner. It should tell you temperatures, all that sort of stuff. Your kernel log, all that sort of you know stuff if that you're interested in. Some are, some aren't. For me personally, I'm not interested. I just want it up and mining. More diagnostics. This is to find your uh, miner itself. It's gonna show you um, what its IP is on the network, all that good stuff. Your reboot button and your uh, clear and refine this is to clear the config file so very very straightforward if you've got uh, miners like this before you won't need to know anything here but just a brief overview of what you're looking at should also mention fan speeds here you can set your custom fan speed i like to leave them on auto i did actually find this very interesting it's got front and rear here now Looking at the miner, it's only got rear fans, so I'm not sure what the front is. I presume this is just a general dashboard that they use um, for other miners that may have front and rear. And if we go back into our miner status as well, you know, it's got an option for four fans here. Only two of them are online, so I presume that's what they're talking about. They're all pretty straightforward, um, all the sort of stuff you would have seen before. So let's, uh, let's move on, on and start looking at some actual numbers. So let's have a look at uh, the efficiency of this miner. We can see right here on miningnow.com, under the script algorithm, we've got a list of different miners sorted by efficiency. 
And this uh, D1 Mini is right at the very top. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, the sixth most efficient, or you could say the fourth most efficient um, in its class because it's as efficient as the Volkminer D1. So efficiency, really, really important when it comes to staying online and being profitable. So if we take a look at the profitability right now, our daily income, $2.53. But of course, we have to pay electricity. So at 10 cents USD, the final profit at the end of each day is $1.37. So not a huge amount, right? You're not going to be finding any of these sort of home mini miners that are making 10, 20, 30 dollars. It's just not realistic. The smaller units, they're less powerful. But like we said, the efficiency will keep you online longer. And when we take a look at the price of Dogecoin right now, we're down about 76%. Uh, percent. So we're at about 17 cents versus the all-time high of 73 cents. So about a 4x down. You know, I could hypothetically see this coin going easily back up to 45, 50 cents. So, you know, at $1.37, let's open up this calculator. $1.37, let's say we get a 2.5x back on price. You know, and we times that by 30.4 for our months, you know, 104, $110 a month it could be making. That's not even at all time highs. So for me personally, these are the sort of things I like, but even still at that sort of price range, it's a fairly long ROI. So you really need to consider these sorts of things before you go out and spend a big bunch of money on them. But profit is profit. I'm a miner. I like mining. So this is what we're doing for now. I'll take the dollar 30, keep stacking that passive income and just let it continue day after day. So the Volk Miner D1 Mini, would I recommend it? Look, I would say as far as Dogecoin miners, at home Dogecoin miners in its class, it is the best so far that you can run on any sort of, you know, outlet around the world. It's low power, moderate sort of sound. You know, compared to the DG Home One, which I have a couple of, it's more efficient at around the same price and efficiency is what's going to keep you online longer but i just wanted to give you my thoughts on it show you how to set it up show you what the actual numbers as far as profitability are let me know guys down in the comments are you going to get one of these is it a waste of time are you throwing the money away are you better off buying the coin let me know guys and i'll see you in the next one peace